Christine Finn is today's first speaker. Uh, Christine is a classically trained archaeologist turned journalist, and she's a tech talk like the rest of us. She wrote a really good book that I highly recommend called Archaeologist, you know, uh, I'm sorry, called Artifacts, an, Arche an archaeologist year in Silicon Valley. I read it maybe 10 years ago, and it's still very applicable today. She's working on a sequel, and she's doing fresh research of studying us. <laughs> We are the we, we are the uh, mouses in the cage here. So, um, Christine, she's going to give a talk and tell us what she's up to. And Christine is an old old BCF supporter, so we're thrilled to have her back all the way from the UK. Hi, it's absolutely wonderful to be back here. Um, I first came to Silicon Valley in 1999, and any of you familiar with the book will know the story, and I'll be giving a little that backstory as well. Um, as ever mentioned, I'm an archaeologist and a journalist. I started out as a journalist and then I studied archaeology and anthropology. And uh, I as a scientist, so today. So, what I've been pushing in the UK and actually in various um, other environments, as soon as I got into the literature, is the way that we as archaeologists um, look at it. And for years and years, when I first saw this idea out there, no one really thought that that's about it. I was going to go to the web conference, perhaps previously, and it certainly went to the point of the world. So, what happened in that time? And even since the last time I spoke with the BCF, yeah, which was the last time I was with the US, I looked at what's happened to make people realize that we need to be collecting a different sort of Which is, I don't know, 
this amount of well, I think really is this amount of human life, but a place where humans go to die and then get something else. And I think that's what I was looking for. Uh, 
I decided to go over them in any case it's not helpful. And that's really when the main thing of my research will happen is that I'm introduced to the names and they keep me up. So what I was also aware of was that it was one of the people who were doing incredibly well, but also people who weren't doing so well. And the other thing that was material for me was how does it go to be huge? Which, as you know, is one of the various coordination nations. And I was very, um, I just sort of out to sort of remind people that some technology was always And I thought that was very well related to the area, which was I was really so that's the tool we And I was um, fascinated by their, their own company connections. And also the way this case the artifacts. And then encourage their employees to write notes about the process. And again, all of this would be very technical to you. So I traced that note back to and for packaging as a concept, I thought it was really interesting. And um, but it was really fascinating to hear his mental world. He had all sorts of and all the So I was starting to realize that so many other stories could go on, and that was sort of thing. And I looked at the public meeting for the Intel, which was much more cued um, with, I suppose, the kind of operation. Uh, but it was still very good. I think it was a big issue. 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 It was a big Beautiful, like this one. 
But it needs to be talking about the sort of material that has to have a match from which is within the other category of dialogue. And this bread of fortune is the most important thing to be And this was slightly more fun. And I remember having this conversation with someone who never came out of this bread of and was like, we'll see you on this video and the next one is there. And this guy obviously really, really wanted to say that he felt very closely to the topic. And of course, when the video started, it was apparent that someone was in the room willing to pay anything for this kind of material, this material in this context. And indeed, this guy was priced out. This one would be very familiar with this image of the artifact that um, is associated with the area. This was one of the cues. That was um, uh, going to be and it was really the start piece of the texture, and it went for a fantastic amount of money. Um, and I found out some months later with that, and it was um, they combined the tech guru behind um, uh, Microsoft, and he has a whole collection of other tech material, and he also collects uh, measuring devices such as slide rules and, uh, and the like. So I was invited out to this collection in Seattle where he had classic things in um, his museum, which is the time of staff that and there's a house attached to it, it's moving to something else, where he could expand his collection. He also has several frames. So back in Silicon Valley, I was finding myself absolutely transfixed. A feeling that things were starting to change very rapidly. Again, this was still a crucial time, it was the spring of 2000. Um, the Silicon Valley paper was highlighting how difficult it was to, to live in the area at the time. Um, and there were stories in the papers of people uh, who were going to deliver their children to the park, the trunk of it, while she went to work, which was going to be a child here as well. So there were these two very different energies, very different. Um, Life and sex running in Silicon Valley, which is important in terms of archaeology. Um, because, again, if we're looking at the array of data, we want to know what the context is, because it would be such a mixture of things. Um, and again, it gets back to that, I was thinking in terms of Pompeii, and if Pompeii is in Silicon Valley, we find these vast houses with you know, 20 bedrooms, 20 bathrooms. Um, Parking for you know 40 cars or whatever, but only one occupant, and that would really tell a story as well. But again, if you're looking at it archaeologically, um, that would change the social background. You'll think, okay, all these bedrooms, all these bathrooms, all this parking, there must be X number of people certainly more than one. Um, and then, of course, the, you know, the classic story of the HP garage, uh, the house attached. Again. And that's something that people can start to get their head around the value of the, of the technology um, in terms of more than the objects, but actually the place where things were made. Um, Yahoo, I mean, this is quite timely to bring this up now because of the fate of Yahoo in the last uh, week or so. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen the Yahoo sign in New York. Um, when I went into Yahoo, the chapter about the market was all about the nice places to go. Oh. Um, they told me that people could get uh, a little bit of money taken out of people signing you, and they certainly did, particularly after they got married, and then they would send them those to the uh, and they would keep these into their material collections. So you can see that there's already something else is growing out of this um, out of the continuum um, beyond sheer possession of the And then some of you might want to see. Uh, we made a point this summer. And uh, I don't believe it's there anymore. So that's part of, again, the uh, breaking my, risking my, my uh, life to get this photograph on the side of the screen. Um, and what we're talking again about change of the time, um, this couple I interviewed with uh, them had been working originally in Salad Group, and their work uh, had been to check out the Salad Street Group with that no condition. And within very short time, they were checking uh, games and checking other technologies that went through. And meanwhile, this tree was growing in their home, and I just felt uh, outside their home. And I just felt this was a sort of poignant bringing together of change over time. 